Hello and welcome to Watch What Crap Ends, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mantelker, and joining me today is the one and only, the wonderful Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How's it going? Hi. Good. Thank you. Great to be here. Oh my God. So great to have you here. It's so great. We're here to talk Below Deck Med. Um, before we dive into that, though, we do have like a fun little uh, mini announcement to make, which is that for years, People have been saying, hey, um, how do I go through your back catalog back catalog of shows? Like, for instance, if I want to listen to all your recaps of Real Houses of New Jersey season eight, like, how do I do that? There's so many shows on Watch What Crappens. Well, thanks to our lovely friend, Paul, who has been going through and organizing uh, the back catalog into playlists, we now have some enhanced back catalog navigational greatness going on if you go to the watch crap and site we have now arranged the back catalogs for below deck med real housewives of new york real housewives of new jersey real housewives of orange county and winter is crapping uh by season meaning that like i just said if you wanted to hear You know, our recap of Real Housewives, all our recaps of Real Housewives of New York season eight. Now you can easily do that. You just go to the website. There's a tab there that now says back catalogs. You just go there and you just follow the navigation and you'll go to the New York page and you'll scroll down, scroll down to the Spotify playlist. These are organized by Spotify playlist, by the way. So um, if you don't want to have to keep coming to our website, you can just, I think, add the playlist to your Spotify library, whatever you want to do. So uh, hopefully that makes it a lot easier for everyone to access our back catalog. And right now we've started out with those five shows because, um, you know, some of them are airing. New York is coming back soon. We will be adding more shows to our back catalog uh, inventory as Paul organizes them, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll make announcements as new shows go live on our site, quote unquote. Obviously all these shows are still available to anyone to listen to you just you know even if they're not on our site you can navigate our back catalog this just makes it a little easier so um if that's something that you want to do if you're going to go on a road trip if you like going down memory lane uh then go check out uh, the back catalogs feature now on watchercrappens.com yay hurrah hurrah yeah huzzah as they say yeah. All right, so today is a below deck med day. What do you think of that, Ben? Oh, I think great things about that. What do you think about that, Ronnie? Love it. Um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about poor Ellie this week, you know. Just, just really has it rough <laughs> over there. <laughs> just been thinking this poor, poor Ellie. Now we've been watching some Love Island as well, which I'm new to. I'm new to that show because I had watched a lot of uh, Bachelor and Bachelorette in my day to do another podcast called Rose Pricks, which is still on. I'm not on it, but it's still there. And I used to do that, so I watched a lot. So I had enough hoery, and I mean, I mean that for both boys and girls. And so I had kind of given up on that for a while, and um, now we have that in our lives. But it really is crazy to see how much these shows have all learned from those shows because now this show is just that show it's just people feeling like they're losers if they're not fucking somebody on camera i don't think they even like the people that they're fucking on camera they just feel like they need to be fucking somebody to be worth anything and i just don't know what that's doing doing for the evolution of the human species Mm -hmm. but i do know that it's very entertaining to me especially when the people who are fighting over dick are maids Mm. or bug people pest control people like the snake guy on um love island so i just want to say you know thank you for all the desperation and uh open wound gaping open woundery it's been happening on tv for a moment when you said the pest people i thought you were going to talk about the gay that we profiled on uh dwell hello this week which will be coming up later in the week but our dwell hello episode this week follows a gay pest control guy in uh, brisbane and so that's why I see it's even affected house hunters because yeah. even house hunters the guy feels like it's a house hunters episode and he still needs to be getting dick in the house hunters episode this is true to prove that he's worthy you know so not even a joke. it just goes to further prove my point i mean these these shows have really just changed everything well, it's such a weird concept to me to think like, okay, I'm arriving. There are guys here work- right now working on the house, and I thought, is anybody going to try to fuck me? Am I worth anything? <laughs> well, imagine it's just funny to go into a workplace and say, okay, I'm here first day at my job. 
who am I going to hook up with? <laughs> you know, like that's just not uh, what I would personally uh, think about. I mean, I do. Of course. That's what, that's the only reason to go to work. Listen, I always said when you don't want to go to work, just think today I could meet my husband. You know, like especially waiting tables because you meet so many different people every day. Sometimes that's the only thing motivating me. Like there could be a penis on a stick at the end of this, you know, like the right. carrot on a stick, just like like a little penis being dangled in front of me in my own mind. And I would go every day. I very rarely missed work. I also very rarely got dick at work. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> kept me interested i do wish that we had asked asia um by the way there is an asia interview if you you may have missed it it was up came up about a week ago but i do kind of wish we had asked her like are yacht romances as prevalent as they are on below deck because it really has gotten to a point where people show up on this boat and say okay i want to hook up with that person i want to hook up with that person and it's like are you doing this because you're genuinely attracted to these people? Are you really that horny? Or is it that you uh, are trying to carve out your storyline for this season? Yeah, why not both? Right? Why not both? So here we are. It's uh, early a.m. And Brie and Ellie are still fighting about a man. And Ellie's like, Brie, I'm sorry, but your lack of experience shows. And you are not being aware how a boat works. So you saying, oh, you are belittling me. There is a chain of command. You are on the belittle end of the chain. Okay? <laughs> There's big belittle chain or tiny belittle chain. You are a little tiny Lincoln chain of belittle. Okay? How dare you? How dare you? But sometimes you, you make me feel dumb and it hurts. It's like, Brie, you are putting the iron on the washing machine, right? You're Seriously. ironing the washing machine. <laughs> Other things that make Brie feel dumb. Numbers. <laughs> Electricity. Words. <laughs> <laughs> instructions. Yeah. Ge just general instructions. Ingredient lists on the back of peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> Tinfoil. You mm. might not feel as dumb if you stop doing dumb things. Yeah. Um, and Ellie's like, well, maybe it is your own insecurity that you feel about yourself. That's true. But you're also yelling about somebody swooping in and getting the eyebrows that you wanted to bang. So I don't know that you're really in the house to be throwing that stone. You know what yeah. I mean? You're in a glass house. Throw it in a, throw it in a <laughs> other kind of house. <laughs> so I never said you were dumb. Just that you're very slow and don't understand many, many things in life or practical things or understand, you know, gravity, stuff like that. But you're not dumb. So don't come at me with no goddamn bullshit no more. I've had it. I'm done. I'm done with your goddamn bullshit. <laughs> so Bree's like, she's on some hard trips and I feel like she has something against me because I hooked up with you. <laughs> hooked up with you, so... Maybe she has something against me. Yeah, surely you're not going to make it worse by coming back for more again and again. Yeah. <laughs> just please, before she goes, hug her and then say, It's just that you make me feel so stupid. <laughs> you belittle me. So Ellie's like, she doesn't listen to me. Whether she realizes it or not, both Aisha and I are her supervisors. I'm like, are you her supervisor? I'm not sure that you are. Yeah, it's the second Stu power trip. You know, it's an old classic. And so Bree's like, my feelings are valid. And if she doesn't want to hear about my feelings, then that's her feelings. I And I can't invalidate her feelings because everybody has feelings. And everybody's feelings deserve to be validated. <laughs> this is definitely the thing these days is to... Uh when someone is going off, you say, your feelings are valid. <laughs> now, like, let me you. tell you something. Let me tell you what's even more freeing than accepting all of that. Here's the most freeing thing you can learn to say. Your feelings are stupid. Okay? <laughs> Keep your feelings to yourself. We're at work. No one cares about your feelings. Okay? So best therapy I ever got. I went in as a teenager. I've told you this before. But I went the first time in therapy. It wasn't really therapy. It was a spiritual advisor. And uh, a friend of mine was like, wow, you're really going through the shit. Got kicked out of your house. Got sent to a, a mental hospital because you're gay. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. I was like 15. So I go in. I start sobbing to this lady. I tell her everything about my, my you know, crazy Christian parents and being kicked out of the house and struggling with homosexuality and blah blah i mean i just unload the whole thing and at the end i'm sobbing and she goes are you done and i said yeah and she said ronnie let me give you a piece of advice 
nobody cares about all that. Everybody else has their own <laughs> feelings. And when you walk into a room, nobody's thinking about what's making you sob that day. So you just need to walk into every room and remember that everybody has a story that they could sit here and sob about too. It's not just you. So move on with your life. And I was like, wow, that was like the most freeing thing ever. She was not saying don't have your feelings. She was just like, don't wallow in this. There's other shit to do. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, have you heard of a Chili's? Go get a fried onion. You know, <laughs> do that. And I, it sounds delicious right now, I have to say. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> it sounds so good. I can't even tell you. <laughs> Listen, guys, don't wallow in your feelings. Eat them. Okay? That's my therapy. Take that and enjoy it. It was free. <laughs> I would love an onion ring right now. So, uh, well, that's some interesting therapy. I don't know your feelings, and I will not invalidate. <laughs> yes. My hunger, my hunger is validated. Thank you. You're hungry? And that's a valid feeling for you. I love that. I love that sh that that Bria's taken it so far that she's like, "Well, uh, my feelings are valid." And even though she's being a total bitch, her feelings are valid, and I can't take that away from her. I'm like, you can take that away from her. She's being a bitch to you. Yeah, you can take it away. All feelings are not valid. Okay, they're just not. Sorry. That's a stupid part of modern. That's a stupid part of modern living. Everyone's feelings are not valid. Just because you call them feelings does not make them valid. Okay, people are feeling that gay people shouldn't have equal rights and that women should not have choices over yeah. their own bodies. Guess what? Your feelings are invalid. Fuck your feelings. Fuck you and fuck your feelings. There. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it. So then we go to Asia organizing breakfast with uh, the guest Brittany, who's a disaster. Like I just don't like Brittany. I can't help it. Don't like her. And so meanwhile, Jono is getting stuff ready and he's like lobster eggs benedict's coming but it needs to be hot poopy pussy popping hey anybody have an ingredients list for pussy because it's about to pop and uh we are seeing some real growth from Jono uh because he says what i've learned from last charger is i don't want to put out cold eggs i was like oh my god i'm so glad you learned this lesson as a chef that cold eggs are not ideal <laughs> I can't believe he even said that. <laughs> like, and he was like, <laughs> and then he goes, so I'm going to make these eggs, Benny, nice and fresh. I still think my job is on the line, though. No complaints. No complaints. You're getting warm eggs, okay? Fresh eggs for everybody. It's like, wow, congratulations. <laughs> the only thing worse is if he said, this charger, what I've learned is that chicken can't be raw. It's like, <laughs> you're a chef. You should know these things. So um, now everyone gathers and Sandy's like, hey, everyone, how was your dinner? This is a trick question because I already know the answer. And they're like, fabulous. It was wonderful. Okay, great. Well, we're going to haul anchor at 11 and then we're going to go to our next destination. It's a very cool place, but I don't want to take it away because Aisha is going to tell you all about it. Oh, my God, Aisha. Oh, I'm okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to spoil it. Okay, wait, wait. It's an island. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Aisha, it's your, um, you, you say the rest, Aisha. <laughs> All right, Ely, could you put the cutlery out so it doesn't look like we forgot the cutlery? And she's like, okay, copy. And um, we don't see this, but I don't think that um, Ellie does this. Because later, they're like, oh, my God, Ellie's not doing anything I'm asking her to do. Yeah. And then we get a clip of Aisha asking her to do everything. But we don't see a clip of Ellie not doing everything that she was being asked to do. Of course, I guess you can't have a clip of not doing things. Yeah. I guess. So I don't know what my argument is here. But I have a feeling this is kind of like the Hannah edit where Hannah was always shown outside smoking. But I was mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. That's the same time of day that she was smoking last time. <laughs> the sun's in the same place. You can't just play the same smoking clip over and over to prove laziness. And I wonder if that's happening to Ellie. Poor Ellie's sweet having, Ellie, who never did anything to anybody. Yeah, Ellie's having a real hard time uh, this episode with cutlery. It just does not seem to be working for her in the sense that the act of putting it on a table is just, it's just a little bit one, it's just, it's a bridge too far for her today. Yeah, it's a far bridge. Uh, oh, I just got a text from a friend that says, Jesus, Ellie sucks. Well, that's not that's nice. So I'm over funny. here trying to stand up for Ellie. I love Ellie. You know, and I think on Instagram, her name is the Balkan Biscuit. Isn't that her name, Ben? <laughs> I think it's something like that, yeah. So she comments sometimes on Instagram. She'll be like, well, let me tell you, something about the upside-down moons is because our epaulets were upside down. I'm like, oh, thank you. Um, well, she doesn't sound bitchy when she says Ellie. I'm like, you're not my supervisor. I am actually your supervisor. Um, uh, you know, uh, I don't, something that cracked me up, because I don't know um, if it's going to be in the notes or not, because it was such a small moment. 
But um, at one point, Trishel was talking about Ellie and she goes, Allie, her name's Allie, right? Um, she's really nice. And I was like, I love that Trishel. This is so Trishel that she comes on this boat. And after like three days, she still doesn't know Ellie's name. She's calling her Allie the entire time. It's, it's a tough. It's, it's very tough Trishel. Charter. It's a very tough charter for Ellie. But the, my point was before I, because, you know, I just start talking about nothing. I love Ellie because her name has biscuit in it. The Balkan biscuit on Instagram. Mm. Boobies and biscuits. I'm into Does it. Does that mean that you're also a Limp Biscuit fan? No, I don't, don't like Limp things. I mean, <laughs> Limp. Uh, the, limp outweighs the biscuit uh, nature of that name. <laughs> it really does. Uh, but I don't want a hard biscuit either. I just don't want to have to think about penises and biscuits at the same time. I'm usually indulging in one of those things separately from the other. It's not the things a, that I mix in my mind. Dick and biscuit. I'm what like, about keep a them band separate. called Perfect Biscuit? <laughs> <laughs> perfect biscuit fluffy biscuit how about You're that really butter like, biscuit I'm, I'm buying the box set <laughs> i'm going to the concert <laughs> i'm in now that's something i'll pay a thousand dollars to see you know biscuit biscuit swift <laughs> <laughs> the eras tour uh eras that wasn't even a pun why did i even say that the eras tour <laughs> it wasn't even a biscuit pun i don't know i was trying to make that work with biscuit tour. in my head and it never came together it's like i'm sure <laughs> It's sure, just but... a biscuit doing the Euros tour. It's just a biscuit <laughs> on stage singing, you know, like, we will never, ever, ever get back together. No, it would not sing that because no one breaks up with biscuits. No That's one. true. It would sing, hey, no. hi, I'm the problem, it's me, because I've definitely had biscuits sing that to me when I'm like, why am I gaining weight? And biscuits are like, hey, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. So, yeah, Biscuits would sing that one. Or they could also sing, we never go out of style. We never go out. It's Biscuits just like <laughs> mocking scones. Scones are like, listen, <laughs> listen, like, we, like people keep calling me dry, but I'm actually pretty good if you think about it. <laughs> biscuits like, we're never out of style. We're not bis We're not scones. Like, that's not even the lyric. Like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cruel Biscuit. There's that little that little boy at the end of the stage. I'm on a cruel biscuit. How does bad blood? Bad biscuit blood. I that's, got that's the biscuit, biscuit blood. That's the biscuit and scone uh, rivalry song. <laughs> you know, at the biscuit era's tour, that little boy shows up at the edge of the stage, and it's like, I want a picture with the biscuit. It's just like a little crumb. Every time I'm at a Weight Watchers meeting and um, I look at the scale at the weigh-in part, I'm always thinking. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Shame on me now. I'm just singing it to a biscuit. I mean, biscuits really work for Taylor Swift, but like 90% of her 90 songs, of wildest songs. dreams. What do I dream about biscuits? <laughs> Gorgeous biscuit. Oh, I know what Taylor Swift song. <laughs> but Daddy, I love him. How about biscuit? Ooh, look what you made me do. Look what you made me biscuit. do. Biscuit. Ooh, biscuit. That's the biscuit, biscuit. story right there. Yeah. Full on biscuit. I can do it with a broken heart. Biscuit. Um, <laughs> Fortnite, lover. Just... Biscuit. Lover. Fortnite. Yeah, that's, biscuit. That's Fortnite. Biscuit. What about? Blank um, space. Biscuit. Karma. Where the biscuit used to be. <laughs> karma. Shake it biscuit. off. Biscuit. Literally a biscuit. <laughs> what about the one that's like 16 and all that? Wait, I don't remember how that song. <laughs> It's like, I am like, you're my Romeo. I'm your Juliet. That's Biscuit. Yeah, that's Biscuit. Biscuit. Don't blame me. Biscuit. Mm -hmm. Completely. A hundred percent. Don't blame me. Lavender haze. Biscuit. Lavender haze. <laughs> that's Biscuit. If you're having a lavender scented Biscuit. Gorgeous Biscuit. So high school Biscuit. Literally works for every song. Thank you. You're welcome, Taylor Swift. That, everyone always, you're everyone welcome. always thought she was singing about her exes, but it turns out that we've cracked the code. She's been singing about biscuits all this time. She was singing about her ex biscuits, like other biscuits that she's had. You know, when, when she gets up on stage and she points at the audience, she's just pointing at biscuits that she sees. That's all. <laughs> it's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Okay, so then, um, let's see. So Sandy's checking on the gas, and so Aisha's like, Okay, all right, we've got your lobster Benedicts, and there's some extra lobster. So today we're going to... Oh, wait for it. Here it comes, guys. Oh, Aisha, God, do it. I'm, I'm about to. Aisha, it's going to be good. Guys, this is one of Aisha's best numbers. Don't talk. Nobody talk. Aisha, tell them. It's cool. Do it. It's Money Island. You're going to Money Island. Congratulate. God damn it, Sandy. 
Here she comes now going to an island. Boop, boop, boop. Shotgun bed, and I'm going on a yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. God, when does the money part come with the song? I really started too early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm best voting as best as I can. Money, 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 money. What an island, money! Oh God, there, finally got it. Downstairs, Jono's just like popping my pussy, popping my <laughs> pussy. Like, oh, I love someone money, playing money. Money, <laughs> money, money, yeah. <laughs> We're going to Money Island. There's a little cave there, and you have to swim through a little hole in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> I have some thoughts about this cave, but we'll get there. So uh, this cave sucks. Okay, this cave flat out sucks. Was there a cave? Because it looks just like a little a divot in a rock. It's not a divot. I mean, it's it not a, a cave. It's a divot. It was literally a rock vagina. They went in there, and that it was, and it was shallow. It was just, it, it was not a cave. It was not proper. And caves do suck. Everyone knows that whenever you watch Our Planet or Planet Earth or whatever, the episodes about caves are always the worst episodes, right? Yeah, it's also something uh, in New Mexico. It's like a tourist thing we go to, Carlsbad Caverns, and you go through the caves and the caverns, and you look at the stalactites, the bat poops and stuff. And I always kind of liked it because it's like naturally cool down there. But otherwise, it's just like a cave, yeah. and I don't I mean, really get it. Caves are beautiful, but like they're also so scary. And when people talk about how they go on these cave, cave dives or whatever, or, and they have to go, like, I just I just don't, I think that we are, we're not meant to go into caves, and we shouldn't. You know, maybe a light cave, but but nothing really too excessive. Even Jesus refused to stay in a cave. He he was uh, he resurrected right out of one when they tried burying him in one. He was like, "No, caves are stupid. I'm out of here." And they're like, "Oh my God, it's a miracle." He just hated caves that much. <laughs> he said, "Love it or list it," and he went for list it. <laughs> he listed that shit. He listed it. He's like listing the cave. I'm taking a loss on this cave. That's how much <laughs> this cave sucks. <laughs> So they're going to Money Island, and then of course Marsha's like, "Oh, I can't, I can't go there. I can't get in the water. Like I have peacock hair." Because Marsha still has her like, "I slept on my hair, and that's my style kind of yeah. hair." Um, I don't know. I I feel like Marsha needs to get other things to cling on to, because <laughs> that's not it, Marsha. It's not working for you. The hair. You need to find something else for your personality. But that's my iconic thing. I'm Marsha doll. So and Aisha's like, "By the way, can you swim? Okay." And she's like, "No." So Aisha's like, she's like, I really love Marsha's attitude. I really do. But do you imagine putting that much effort into how you look every day? Oh, my God. I get exhausted looking at her. I can't do it. I'm like, to be fair, you also live in a van and poop in a bucket. So really, anyone who puts on just basically a clean shirt is like, oh, my God, all that effort to look good every day. <laughs> um, so then um, she radios Jono. Oh, they love the Benedict, Jono. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> what was that? That was my pussy. It popped. <laughs> my pussy literally popped right now. Uh, mm. So then <laughs> Ellie goes down into the crew mess, and um, uh, and Joe is there, and she's like, what's going on? Did you hurt yourself? He's like, no, I just have so many cuts. And he has, like, a pile of Band-Aids. Did you notice? It was like a little bird's nest of Band-Aids. He's just sitting there, like, taping himself up. I'm like, what has happened to this man? Yeah, what is happening to that? And why don't we see how he's cutting himself so much? Is it on the <laughs> um, thing that he can't turn properly or whatever? I wonder. He spends every episode, like, pulling that winch. Like, right, every episode, there's always a scene where he's down there, like, squatting and being like, Ha, oh, just got it's not going to catch. It's not catching. I'm like, what? what is going on with poor Joe? And he's just sitting there in the corner. He actually looks really cute. He's just, like, taping up his bandaged hands it's, but with so many band-aids. Yeah, I don't think we're supposed to say winch anymore, by the way. I think that word has been canceled. We need to come up with another word. <laughs> the anchor holder. <laughs> I don't know. Wink anchor puller. The so, um, shell. Joe's, uh, so Ellie's like, what is going on with Bree in this sleepover situation, bloody Joe? And he's like, oh, you see, you see, I don't, I, I IDK, I IDK, I IDK, I IDK. Listen, all I know is I've put a mattress on my floor, and it's not beyond me, because you know who else used to do that? Run, Peppy! Grandpappy Papperson. <laughs> Proud to do it. 
You know, she's creating drama for no reason. And she's just going to get out of her way to be like, oh, I'm victim. But nobody has done anything for, to you. So shut the fuck up. Get to your work. Get to your bed. There's nothing to do with me. I was like, the moment she said this, I was like, oh, my God. Ronnie is going to love Ellie forever. When, as soon as she said, oh, I'm the victim. I was like, oh, she's speaking Ronnie's language right now. Well, except that she is being a victim while she's accusing somebody else of playing the victim. I am so sick of being the victim of somebody else who's claiming to be victim. Ow, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> is she the victim questionable <laughs> so um then we go back to the uh, guest having breakfast and sandy is like that crew that crew you can start hauling the anchor you can start hauling the anchor <sighs> morning morning <laughs> morning morning oh yeah anyone anyone okay well i guess it's still me masturbating morning you know what's funny i actually did listen to moni moni recently it was it came on the radio and i was like i haven't listened to the song in so long and i just cranked it up so loud and i was like it's a good song it's a banger i was like so into it and then i got pulled into my garage i was like Mone, Mone. and then i was like oh i'm playing this too loudly because i'm definitely that person right now who's playing a song who thinks that like like I can hear it in my car, no one else can. And clearly, probably everyone else could in the complex could hear me pulling in, blasting "Money, Money," and then I got so mad. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, don't be embarrassed. That's like some old guy realness right there when you're just like blasting "Money, Money" in your car. And- <laughs> Mona, 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 Mona. Yeah, take that, rappers. <laughs> yeah. So now we go to um, the deck team hauling anchor which is their favorite thing. And Nathan is like, yeah, bro, uh, we're getting caught. We're getting caught here. The windlass has been giving us problems since day one. You're good to go. Oh, God, the windlass. Oh, the windlass is a real issue, Um, which, you know, windlass is also a spinoff episode, I think, at this point of wind. I was going to say, you know what we call windlass? Nepotism. That's a nepotism show. But you know what? I still watch it. It's good. Not as good as the original, but it's like it's a good prequel. You get to really know where everyone came from. They gave a show to Wynn's children, you know, and it's it's not quite as good. But, you know, you got to make room for the next generation. Am I right? I, I didn't think I really liked it. But then I went back to regular wind and I was like, OK, boomer. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Crazy. Money, money. So, then, <laughs> so then Marsha and Brittany are talking and Marsha's like, Brittany, I want to know more about this charity fashion show you're doing. What, what, it's for autism, right? And Brittany goes, yeah, autism speaks. Marsha's like, wow, does it? <laughs> it's an interesting title. I like that title. Can I help? She's like, yes, you too can help autism speak. I'm in. So then we, so then back on the deck, uh, Sandy. Autism roller skates, the spinoff autism sings well awesome autism speaks is a actually a very large charity it's a very big one yeah they've been doing they've been doing a lot they've been on um i think i feel like they is that the same one that jacqueline larita was doing i don't know i don't know I gotta look into that but um joe sandy is like okay let's get back to that win last my favorite prequel show what's going on there and like well it's giving us a problem you know it starts i'm gonna i'm gonna start flaking the chain so okay well done thanks very much so they're all doing all stuff stuff on the deck etc you might want to tell that chain to get some deodorant i mean some uh, conditioner am i right (laughs) hilarious okay uh great i believe in you joe just kidding i don't and um so there's a problem that it's not catching right and um then we switch to ian doing push-ups because of course every time something dramatic and terrible happens ian is either eating or doing a push-up of some kind or a a dip yeah this is um ian is definitely getting that the edit this episode he he does a lot of push-ups in this episode like literally the entire episode shit is going wrong and they just keep cutting to him doing push-ups so then Ellie goes over to Aisha and she's like, Aisha, I'm sorry. And she puts up, her, she always has this thing where she does like the mime in the glass box thing. She's like, I'm sorry. I am in a glass box right now. I have to say something to you right now. This breeze situation is getting out of control. She's sleeping on the freaking floor in the boys' cabin. And once again, I am stuck in a glass cabinet. Can you please help me out? And she's telling me I'm belittling her. And Aisha's like, but are you? Are you? I mean, you're not supposed to mock people for sleeping on the floor last time I checked. And she's like, I'm not. I'm not that person. I'm not the little person. I will not stand for it. That is where I draw the fucking line. That is where it is drawn. 
And she's like, well, I know how hard it's hard, but you both need to get on with it so we can care, sort out after this chart. We can, we'll sort it all out after this charter, okay? Bree and Ellie just have this annoying rivalry that is circling around Joe. You know when people are emotionally distracted, it's not like you can discipline them out of their emotions. I was like, I feel like Ronnie is yeah. going to have something to say about this. <laughs> well, but you can't discipline people out of their emotions. I mean, why else would parents say, oh, yeah, you want to cry? What if I give you something to really cry about? That's how you discipline people out of their emotions. And you stop crying so you don't get beat. I mean, Jesus Christ. Do I have to raise this whole network? I mean, hello. It's called the UK. All right. What, you know, it's called stiff upper lip. It's there for a reason. Okay. Caroline Stanbury's entire backstory is being disciplined out of emotion. 100%. Disciplining people out of emotion has worked for centuries, okay? And that's the problem with the world today. So, um, I love that Ellie is trying to pretend that she's not mad about Joe, and she's making it all about uh, the belittling word. You know, it's so funny. So then Sandy, we cut to Sandy um, doing jumping jacks on the bridge, and um, she does jumping jacks. It's almost like she's Play, she's got a virtual reality headset on and she's playing some kind of game where they're just throwing <laughs> balls at your face or i guess just like me if people were throwing balls at my face she's like one two three four five five like, are you swatting flies away from your face what are you doing yeah like her arms are definitely not extending over her head she's definitely just doing like this weird like windshield wiper thing with her hands and she does the only like six she's like oh and a two a three four five six oh money money that was a lot that was a lot right now i gotta get i gotta, yeah, get gotta, I gotta really oof i gotta start exercising <laughs> she looked like she was like playing volleyball and wanted someone to hit the ball to her okay over here over here over here oh no not again okay they didn't hit it to me okay that's fine uh, so then uh, Nathan and Gail are doing their flirt where he's like, tomorrow's drop-off day and, uh, you know, like, uh, there's no drama. I mean, there is some drama, but I'm glad it's not us. And she's like, oh, I didn't think it would be us. I mean, oh, I feel like if we do fight, well, you know, we just get over it. Do you want a strawberry? No, that hurt my feelings. All right, I'll have a strawberry. Thank you. The end. Your feelings are validated. So then... Uh... <laughs> So then Ellie is like, uh, I'm sorry, Aisha's like, Ellie, are you good to go? She's like, yeah, but by the way, just so you know, Brie has also mentioned that she's been fired from boats for causing too much drama. So, <laughs> dot, 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 if you know what I'm saying, etc. If you know what I'm saying, <laughs> to, to be continued, if you know what I'm saying, huh? If you looked at her LinkedIn, you would see that it says, always fired for saying people belittle me. If you look at her LinkedIn, you would see that she has been recruited for the Globe Theater because she has too much drama. Okay, that's what they—that's what they like. Cause drama theater. You see what I'm saying? Here? Okay, just think about it. Uh, well, we can't deal with that right now because we're on charter. So then we go to Gail saying she just needs a hug. I just need a hug. It's just so rough. <gasps> Bloop. Why aren't you calling me back? Oh, God, he won't stop texting me. <laughs> so Nathan hugs her. And then uh, Brie calls her mom. And she's like, uh, we find out a little bit about Brie. So she's like, standing up for myself is scary. I went to a voting school. And they just had this way of like, making me feel small. We got hierarchy drilled into us. Uh, whoever was above you in terms of age, you would have to wait at a door, even if the person was 100 meters away. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be bullied. <laughs> the fuck? That doesn't, that doesn't check out. I'm just going to say that right now. I love <laughs> Ronnie, you let a, you went in front of a five-year-old when you are four, you fat, stupid, little Coke bottle glasses <laughs> slut. Little does Brie realize that then it turns the other way, that if you go in before someone who's younger than you, then you get bullied also. What, Ben? You 45-year-old man jumping in front of a six-year-old to get into the building? <laughs> so what? <laughs> I got bullied. Um, I, um, love, I love that we have dueling uh, boarding school trauma storylines happening on Bravo right now. Honestly, both Brie and Caroline Sandbury. <laughs> Caroline Stanbury's whole thing is like, you want to talk about a tough childhood? I don't care about growing up in Kenya. I went to a boarding school and I, people were mean to me. That's real. I not trouble. only had nannies, my nannies wore brown. Hideous <laughs> creatures. Hideous, hideous brown 
brown uniform nannies. Which, by the way, someone messaged us and said that um, the brown uniform is like a is actually a specific brand of nannies called like the like the Norton nannies or something like that. And they are considered to be the best nannies in the world. Like you go to an academy and like when you graduate, you get to wear the uniform. So they're also really good at finding viruses on your computer, which is (laughs) handy. (laughs) They also can fly by umbrella, which I'm like so impressed by. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so now Joe is, uh, Ace is trying to get the guests ready for their little excursion thing to the, um, hole in the, hole in the wall cave that they're going to. And, uh, Joe's like, we need 20 minutes. We need 20 minutes. Ouch. Oh God. I just lost a hand. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anybody got any tape there? <laughs> I don't have any bandits. My grandpappy always said, have a bandit. So... <laughs> <laughs> he does have those band-aids to cover up little tiny tattoos. So like, can't have grandpappy see. So um, they're waiting for her to go out, and Sandy's like, "I don't know what's taking so long. You know, the docks in the water. We gotta be, we gotta be faster. We gotta be faster." So, oh, so here's the thing: we didn't even talk about this. There, the you know the 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 inflatable swim platform things that they put out. They make like a little. I think they're called Naughty Boys. So. For whatever reason, Ian told them to inflate them on like one of the decks. So in like one of the areas where people are normally lounging, there's one of these big ass things just just lying there. The two of them actually just and so it looked strange. And they're like, "Should we be doing it here?" But they're like, "Well, but Ian said to do it here." And we see a, we see a clip of Ian saying that that's what they should do. So now Sandy comes down to that deck and she's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa! This is this is opposite of Moni Moni. This you know what this is." This is Inami Nam. It's the exact opposite of that kind of energy. No, no. No, this is just not going to work. Ian, Ian, get down here. Ian's like doing a one handed push up off the ice machine. He's like, Ian, get over here right now. He's like, oh, just doing some push ups. He's like, Ian, what are we doing with this platform? Why is this platform here? This is a guest area, Ian. This is not where we have platforms. Do you understand me? Do you understand me, Ian? He's like, well, uh, uh, he's like, well, my plan was to get them off the boat as quick as possible and then just sit tight. But then, obviously, she didn't like how that looked. I guess I'll just smile and say copy. Now, here's my thing. Why was he doing that? Was she telling him at an earlier time, like, he can't just have the the swim platform dock thing sitting in the water this whole time? But then she wants him to go at a moment's notice. So he's trying to, like, have them ready so he can just throw them in the water and look like he's been prepared the whole time. Like, what is he doing? What's he I doing? I don't know. But, but I was just, when I saw it happening, I was like, this. how could this possibly be? the right thing to do like we like we know at this point this is a guest area why are there these giant floating docks just like laying on top of the sofa i don't know nobody yeah, ever knew the answer that's no, for sure never grand peppy <laughs> never answered me so um now the deck team is uh, setting them up properly and stuff and the taxi arrives and she's like we gotta move the guests are waiting okay we will never board the tender from the swim platform okay we gotta be faster guys we gotta be faster it's ch- it's, ch- it's charter three and guess what no one's gonna go faster than the athlete whose name is captain sandy one two three okay <laughs> oh jesus oh, uh, Paris uh, here i come uh, only on nbc peacock bravo so um uh so Ian's like, all right, well the guests can come. And so Aisha's like, Oh, I wish everyone, I wish I could come along with you. I'm really bummed, but I have glass in my thumb right now. And they're like, okay. And they're all just standing around and she's like, Uh, Ian, would you like to tell the guests to come on down? He's like, Oh yeah. So whenever you guys are ready, you can come on board. It's like, what is this guy doing? Yeah. Commercials. Here comes one right now. So then um, Sandy is, you know, come on, Ian, we got to get quicker at this. Listen, here's the only thing we don't need to get quicker at on this boat. Jumping jacks. Okay, pretty quick at those. You want to see? <laughs> one, two, three, I win awards. Four, five, I win awards at quick jumping jacks. Watch this. One, two, three. Okay. It was so tiring. There's three. <laughs> Did you even see him? It was faster than the speed of light. <laughs> if you're wondering why your hair is sitting differently, it's because I caused an instant breeze. I've learned. I've loved wind so much. I finally found a way to actually generate my own. I wish I could move so fast that I could cut you some bangs. Okay. <laughs> that was my polite way of telling you, get some bangs. And listen, that's advice I don't give anybody ever. 
but you need them. And he's like, well, I just had a different plan in my head, and then you come and you changed my plan. And she goes, well, you know what your plan was? Not working. Okay. Your plan wasn't working. Your so those always going before you do anything else. Okay, person with not working plans? Okay. Okay, in life, there are good plans, there are bad plans. Good plans, jumping jacks. Bad plan, walking jacks. See, there's a difference. Okay, the plan matters. <laughs> so then we go and we see snorkeling and swimming to the cave and we find out about Gail and she talks about being uh, half um, half Asian and how it was hard growing up, you know, and she had a lot of identity issues and it wasn't until later in life that she discovered being underwater was the first place that made me feel safe, which is odd because... It's so dangerous. The ocean is terrifying, okay? The ocean could just crush you because it feels like it. You could be swimming and the ocean's like, ah, I don't like them. They sing about biscuits too much. <laughs> They're dead. Boom. And they could just squash you. The ocean could just squash you like a bug. I never felt more safe than in a place where I literally couldn't breathe and, and, and various fishes of different sizes could just eat me. God, I felt so safe. She's like, the ocean was the first place. My boyfriend didn't text me five times. <laughs> It's like the only place she doesn't get cell service. <laughs> so then Ellie is. So now they're all. I just spit this. saying that. I just literally spit out myself. <laughs> really classy. Please take over, Ben. I quit. So uh, now they're all. So they've they've, they've come to this 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 island, Moni Island, and there is like a slit in the rocks, and they're like, we're gonna swim to that slit. And so they're all swimming. Ellie's doing it. She's not a very good swimmer, but but she's trying. And so we see. There's like, we go through the slit and then there's like a little area that you can sit and it looked like there was going to be more cave, but there wasn't. It was just like, it was just like a little slit and they just were all crammed up in there with the cameraman too, by the way, the cameraman's like up there, like up against the wall, trying to film them, getting them all in the shot. And I was like, is this really worth it? I feel like this, this is a really it. bad ex this is a really bad excursion. And then you see Ellie. Ellie we get a struggle of Ellie, um, which is really funny. She's like, I do not know how to swim right. So they put flippers on Ellie, and she's like, oh, ow, ow, oh, God, oh, what biscuit, what mountain biscuit. And then uh, she gets to the thing, and she's like, oh, my God, I did it. I did, I did. And they're like, oh, my God, that was amazing. That was so good, Ellie. She's like, I overcame. I overcame this. And uh, I don't know. I think it's supposed to be a heroic story, but I'm like, you work on a boat. <laughs> it was weird when she when she finally got into the cave and she's like, "Oh my god, I have I have arrived here." And also, Bree, she's a lot of drama. She fired everywhere. Can't keep a job. Just saying. Just saying, everyone. Look at look at how Ellie made it through that little hole in the cave. You're smaller than I thought. Do not belittle me, old bitch. <laughs> I am so your back supervisor. On the like, uh, we're the guests. I am. You're still your supervisor. So back on the boat, Ian is complaining to his crew about how Sandy's such a pain in his ass. And he's like, if I'd been doing it the right way, I probably would have been told to do it a different way. And that's just how it goes. My right, boys. And Nathan's like, you know, you just need to smile and wave basically what we do with you all the time. And he's like, yes. smile and wave, boys. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then downstairs in the kitchen, Aisha is talking to Jono, asking how he's feeling and everything. And then she just lets out this big fart. She goes, ooh, that was dangerous. And he goes, mm, you farted. I also did a stinky one just like two seconds ago, like eggy. <laughs> Oddly enough, it came out cold. <laughs> it was a deconstructed fart. <laughs> Even his egg farts are cold. <laughs> So they get back to the boat, and uh, Joe's like, "How was the how was the excursion? Did the guests enjoy it?" And Ellie goes, "It was nice. I overcame something I was uncomfortable with." <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, "The water?" She's like, "No. <laughs> Ellie is an aptitude. I mean, Bree's an aptitude. <laughs> I was very uncomfortable with that." She goes, "Yeah, I was like going to push through, but by the way, I hope you don't believe that whole thing about me being a bad person and belittling people. By the way, he's <laughs> like right back into it." She's like, I'm a hero. I swim with flippers. Also, I'm not a bad person. Please don't believe. Do bad people swim with flippers well? No. You know, no, one thing don't. I saw underwater, all the fish sleeping in their own beds. I don't know. Just saying. <laughs> so Asia is, pulls Bree aside 
And she's like, I just wanted to talk to you because Ellie mentioned you're fighting and we can't do that on charter. You know, you've got to sort your shit. But she mentioned that you slept in the boys' cabin last night. Why are you doing that? Why? Um, because it was fun. I, like, I did it because I was supposed to be sleeping in the galley because, I, you know, I just needed my own space. And then, like, just before I fell asleep, Joe was like, well, come sleep on my floor. I've got an extra mattress. And I literally went to bed laughing. Like, let's do it again. I was like, what? What is this story? <laughs> now? Oh, no, no, this is not it. Uh, so Ray's just like, are you trying to prove a point to Ellie? And she's like, no, no, I'm just trying to say it like something to her, but like she doesn't want to hear it. So then we go back to Ellie and she's like, well, how would you feel? By the way, Joe, how would you feel if Nathan was sleeping in someone else's cabin? And I would like, oh, Joe, I don't feel safe. How would you feel? He's like, oh, God, I would hate that. Yes, exactly. No, I would hate having to keep talking about this situation. It's been about 30 minutes. Can we can oh, we just thinking about Nathan bit. being somewhere else and someone being in my room. It's so hard to feel comfortable finger banging myself to sleep. <laughs> I <gotta laughs> really miss that guy. <laughs> so Asia, back to Asia. She's like, oh, I reckon squash it since we're on charter. And, you know, it, I can't have you sleeping in the boys' cabin because we're on a trip and you'll be affecting their sleep, their routine. It's not fair to them. Do you know how long it takes to groom those eyebrows? That man <laughs> needs some sleep. From day one, I was very open, telling her that I find you attractive, Joe, and I want to pursue things with you. He's like, oh, well, you could have, you could have told me, though. She's like, yeah, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. It's just, it's just, you know what, she's just very little disrespectful. <laughs> He's, of course, loving this. He's like, well, they're button heads, but I'm the cherry on top. Huh, I'm like the grand puppy on top of the, on top of the Joe Sunday. <laughs> I made it clear to Brie I don't want nothing serious but I feel bad Cause, uh, do I want LA? well who wouldn't want to go there come on <laughs> come on man so um, he's like wow people are already fighting me over me on the third charter <laughs> you guys could have waited <laughs> and so she just kind of laughs and then uh, by the way you're fighting over Joe like Joe's cute and everything but is he fightable like is he he's worth fighting fight over I feel like he's not cute. worth fighting over yeah Exactly, like, but he is definitely cute, and so. Bree's but I mean, it's like when there's one piece of pizza left, you know. I guess he's the only piece of pizza left. <sighs> yeah, it's like, like, do you want that? No, I'm fine. Or what about you? No, I'm fine too. Do you want to split? No, no, no. You have it. You have it. Okay, I'm gonna have. Well, it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the last piece of pizza. Can you? Believe I hope you liked it. I'm her supervisor, and she took my piece of pizza. <laughs> Uh, uh, that is pretty accurate to what it is. Yeah. So, um, so then we go up to uh, this is where Trishel goes. Um, so Allie is the interior, right? And Aisha's like, "Yes, I hope she did okay." And Trishel's like, "Yeah, I mean, she struggled, I think, a little, but she was fine. She was a trooper. I was proud of her. I mean, I did call the manager of Money Island to say I'm sorry, <laughs> but there's someone who's not swimming well outside. But I think it was okay." Uh, so Gail is like so did you guys all model together and uh, Trisha's like oh I'm not a model <laughs> I am a fashionista though so thank you thank you I've got a lot of great outfits coming up later this charter <laughs> Gail's like stop it you're lying about not being a model no it's actually the truth <laughs> no stop it no it's actually the truth <laughs> This is the part, Trishel, where you're supposed to say it to Gail, I thought you were a model. Because Gail's the only one here who looks like a genuine model. Yeah, 100%. So then Aisha's like, like, oh, Ailey, did you have a nice time? I'm just going to go down and just make sure everything, just please make sure everything's pulled for dinner. Like cutlery and plates and napkins and everything. Just set the table. Surely a simple task that any stew can do and this won't come back to become a drama later on. <sighs> Uh, um, so then she goes to Brie and she's like, Brie, this is not my polo. This was in Gail's drawer, but it's Illy's. It's not that fucking hard to look at people's initials and then put them in the right place, is it? Is it? All right? And Brie's like, but where? Where does it say your initials? <laughs> Where's the initials? <laughs> where is it? That's where... There's not many places on a polo shirt to hide things. Just look around <laughs> till you find it. And she tells us... <laughs> But people haven't been labeling their shirts properly. And do I look at for labels? Of course. 
but it's very, very difficult. <laughs> Scary stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Okay, let's. Can we see how the the wave runner? Okay, uh, all right. I just want to point something out to the deck crew. See how the wave runner is in their way. Clip the wave runners on a line and move those out of the way. Is this crew mess clean? Oh God, here. You know what's you know what's a good way to clean a crew mess? You lie on a table and you do horizontal jumping jacks. Ah, ah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Look, it's clean. But put sponges on your hands too. <laughs> So Gail is talking about how she's learned so much and she's gotten so much confidence here and she always wants to be an equal. And um, she was trying so hard on her last boat that she was carrying a big heavy block of metal that it slipped out of her hands and crushed her ankle and took all the skin off of her ankle. And she had to get 16 stitches and a skin graft. And she's like, and it was a rough time because I couldn't prove myself to the men. So I just don't want to be good. I want to surpass expectations. <laughs> Ow! So I just dropped an anvil on my on my ankle. It's like, why were you carrying an anvil? I just want to surpass, surpass expectations. So I think we found the true love match, but these people haven't seen the show edited together. But I feel like the real love match here would be Joe and Gail because they are accident prone and bleeding a lot. And so yeah. there's a love match right there. You guys are welcome. If you're listening to this right now, you got you two crazy kids, give each other a text. So Gail's backstory this episode is that um she was insecure about being half Asian and she she loves being she feels safest under the water and once dropped a heavy block of metal on her foot <laughs> yeah um she's like that's why i like it underwater because things are lighter there <laughs> so uh gail is saying so nathan's like oh you take initiative don't you what are you laughing at what's so funny that can she's like your accent is lovely he's like and so nathan uh is broken up by ian he's like nathan great job on the crew mess just when you wipe the tables just make sure you get the cloth on the microfiber because you can still see all the wet marks the way you did it nathan's like got it microfiber the tops microfiber the top who microfibers a table in the mess hall? That is stupid. That is that's not even real advice. Well, I mean, I don't. I mean, shouldn't it just be that the the table they should just have microfibers there at all times. So when it comes well, to wipe the table, they just it's always gonna be microfibered. Now that I've said that, um, I, like, I, I guess the microfibers that do have. Uh, I guess those those are made out of fiberglass sometimes. No, it's not micro. It's not uh, fiberglass. It's just like the way it's designed is that there's just way more. Uh, it has a lot more ply than would meet the eye. And so what happens is when you Ooh, wipe a little more ply than meets the eye. Yeah. So when you wipe your surface, you can absorb a lot more moisture and it cleans up a lot better. But like, um, it's like it's one of those things where like if Ian had not been a micromanager, it'd be like if he was like, hey bro, when you clean the table, use a microfiber. They'd be like, okay, cool. But because he's such a micromanager, it's like, fuck you. I'm going to clean it with a paper towel. He's the boy that cried microfiber, if you will. <laughs> I got to make sure so now, I forget about microfibers. <laughs> you I'm never like, know what you're going to get here. You never. They're synthetic fibers that are, that are less than 10 micrometers in diameter and are finer than a Desitex or a Denier thread. I, I, I personally have some microfibers and I use them on my counters myself. I use them on my screens, which is where you're supposed to use microfibers. I didn't know people use them on counters. That's yeah. There's a whole, you know, Amazon prime day is next week and maybe there'll be some micro fingers all over them. Hmm. And I will say that microfibers leave little microfibers everywhere. They make me also crazy. So I don't know. I think microfibers are overrated. There, I said it. Imagine if you were just using fiberglass all this time. You're like, because you know, sometimes it's made of fiberglass. Imagine you're just using fiberglass on your. On no, your I meant the tables. <laughs> the tables are made of fiberglass, not the. Oh, the tables. I was saying because I, I said nobody uses my, nobody uses microfibers on tables, but then I thought, oh, well, maybe they're fiberglass, so they get scratched up from regular whatever i don't know i was trying to come up with i was trying to justify why you would use microfibers because it felt wrong once i said it i was like "Ooh, i'm gonna get dinged for that because of course some people do use microfibers on tables because of course they're made out of some special boat thing and then what have i just caused you know now everybody's gonna be mad at me and I'm not, everyone's gonna hate me no one's gonna want to listen to this show if i don't even know where you use microfibers 
I actually need some new microfibers. I'm going to. Rep- All right, to we're, we're wrapping up the microfiber. Wrap next it next week. Wrap it up. Microfibers are wrapping up. They're wrapped. Wrap it up. Okay, they are wrapped. So now it's uh so uh dinner time and they're changing for dinner and Bree is pulling decorations for dinner and Asia is, you know, she's now come up from her break and she's checking in on everything and she realizes that the table has not been set. Dun dun dun. What have you been doing? And Bree's like, Well, we've been pulling plates and then pushing plates. And then pulling plates, and then pushing plates, and I pushed a plate, and then it bullied me. And it's just like, wait a minute, why were plates pulled a long time ago? You know, it's very difficult with Ellie because I don't know if she's distracted, but I mean, she's not doing what I ask her to. Do your job, do your job. So Asia goes up to Ellie and she's like, "How come the plates and napkins and cutlery, nothing's been pulled?" So Ellie's like, "Uh, because I was serving guests the whole time." Like, in that way, like, don't even try to question me on this, Asia. And she's yeah. like, but can you do it between serving them? She goes, and then I was cleaning up the bar and it just didn't happen yet. Okay, well, we need that to be completely done in an hour. So I'll get the plates and, to, you know, to the chef. That's Asia's way of being like, fine, I will do what you didn't do. And I will remember this. So Ellie's like, well, time has definitely gotten uh, the best of me, but at the same time, Brie has literally been getting away with a murder, and I'm out here getting put on the cross. I'm put on the cross for a small mistake. It's bullshit. I don't know what's going on anymore. It's out of control. Seriously over. So then Jono, he's making a, a, a classic Hollywood dinner. He's going to make... um calamari fritos and some sea bass and he's like oh calamari fritos fresh out of the sea baby she's crunchy she's juicy mm, she's getting my pussy popping and sea bass i just want everything to be perfect i want to raise that one little baby steak i made the other night i'm like it's not just the steak it's also the cake and everything with Gigi fernandez and how is hollywood fried calamari i don't understand <laughs> that it's like it's like Vegas it. night all over again with kiko <laughs> So um, now everyone's setting up. Guys are getting ready for dinner. Um, Gail talks about Ellie, and he's like, well, I wanted to get her side of the story. Like, why are the girls sleeping in my cabin and what's going on, you know? And Ellie was saying that she basically broke this little code. Brie broke a code with Ellie. It's called a girl code. And now she's playing the victim about it. But that's between the two of them. You know, it's not professional. It's very immature. Love this girl chat. Who do you think is wrong? Or do you ever want to have sex with me? That's the important part of the story. They both want to have sex with me. Still got it. Still got it. Now, who do I crack on with? And Gail's like, well, whoever you, whoever you, uh, you're going to bang is either going to be the person you're going to continue to bang, or it's going to cause lots of issues. Ow! Sorry, I just dropped a cement cylinder on my foot again. God, I have to stop trying to impress you people. So now um, Ian is talking about performing. He's telling Joe he needs to perform Happy Birthday on the piano because it's the big show tonight. And so Joe gives us a monologue. He's like, being an entertainer, it's always come from me, Mom. I liked acting and she'll give me a scene or whatever and I would act. It's like, can we stop acting like you're going to come in here and play like the entertainer? You're literally hamming your way through Happy Birthday with two fingers. <laughs> I know. I don't need a monologue from you about this right now, okay? My left foot. Yeah, after all this Ow, talk. my left foot was the one I heard. Can we not <laughs> talk about that right now? Okay, Sophie's choice. So, um, uh, meanwhile, Aisha is really so proud of what's happening with Jono uh, because he's doing such a better job this time. And she's like, I would love nothing more than him to run through the ribbon at the finish line with a gold medal around his neck. And he's like, Girl, that's too much running. I'm not going to do that. No way. Yeah, I would really love to finish, and I hope he can, but unfortunately, I know that Captain Cindy's already hired Malia to take his place secretly. We're just waiting for her to arrive. Because <laughs> doesn't this feel like one of those seasons where Captain Sandy has an ace up her sleeve, where she's just waiting? She's like, okay, got one of my favorites loaded in the cannon. Can't wait to put him in here after Jano does something stupid. It's either be Malia or uh, Colin. Oh wow! No. I can't believe I'm back in. <laughs> I wonder if I can... hey mom, can I can you make lasagna for the crew? I'm on chef duty. No problem, Molly. 
You're doing great, Koali. <laughs> so then Ellie is still so mad about Bree. She's like, with Bree, she's trying to make me look like a bad person to the community I live with. But none of my concerns <laughs> have been addressed. <laughs> she's slandering me in the community. It's so funny. She's running for office. <laughs> So, um, Jono's presentation is lovely. He really killed it with that fried calamari, apparently. Uh, Sandy's impressed. And then um, Marsh is like, oh, wow, have you ever seen Trishel's Playboy pictures? Uh, amazing. And Trishel's like, the best one was when I was bending over and calling the manager. <laughs> Iconic. So now after all the talk about Joe being uh, love entertaining and they're like, oh, Joe's going to get on piano. He now it's time for the happy birthday moment. And he's uh, it's on the piano. He's like, uh, bling, 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 bling. it's like <laughs> it's like fifth grade piano recital happening over there. It's not great. And also, everybody does that thing because everybody hates singing Happy Birthday. It's so embarrassing. And you have to sing it badly because you can't be like, Happy Birthday, because, you know, you look like an asshole or whatever. There's just no right way to sing Happy Birthday. And then whenever someone takes over and they're like, I'm going to play Happy Birthday, everybody just kind of gives it to that person like they're doing it. So I'm literally not going to do anything. And then it just ruins the whole experience because some people are like, Happy Birthday. What do you come on? You know, happy birthday. You've sung it before. Why why are 20 of you acting like you've never heard this song before? And then you've got poor little Daniel Day Lewis over there just knocking it out of the park all by himself. Yeah. Um, uh, and this was a particularly bad version of happy birthday. Like, we've seen a lot of bad happy birthdays. This one was just. I, I don't know what was going on with it. I don't know if they were trying to be sexy or something, but they were like slow and low. And they were like, happy birthday. I was like, what is going on with this crew right now? So then um, we go to the morning because, you know, I mean, why do we need to talk about it more? So we go to the next morning and um, Brie wakes up and she's like, it felt really good to be sleeping in my own bed, but people sleep in other people's cabins all the time for different reasons. And it's not like I was sleeping in the bed. I was sleeping on the floor. <sighs> and Aisha's like, Brie, where did you sleep last night? She's like, I slept in my own bed. She's like, good. So then everyone's waking up and everything and um, they're doing the cleaning and Sandy's like, she's like, okay, we're going to go in. It's the last day of charter. Start hauling immediately. Start hauling immediately. And Nathan's like, cop, cop, copy, copy. I'm just having some trouble with the windlass because he's trying to make this windlass go. And every time he's doing it, it sounds like Pep Boys. It's like, rrr, 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 rrr. so things are like not working with the windlass. Yeah, and I said before that's when it wasn't catching, but this is where it's not catching. Dun dun dun. There's no power on the windlass. What are we doing? It's the port side. It's just it's not the port side. It's the starboard side. And she's like, Is it because of my favorite show or is it just not connecting? And he's like, Ah, uh, family ties? No wind. Ah, uh, oh no, it's not connecting. And it's not turning the windlass off. Oh, windless, windless, what's happening? I don't I don't know. I don't know. Hold on. Let me do a few jump attacks. All right, what is the Okay, I just did four. God, that hurt. Jesus Christ, did it catch yet? Did it catch? And then they're like, well, since the windlass isn't working, we're going to get like the tender and we'll bring the guest to shore with the tender. So at this point, because Ian's asleep, you've got Luca, you got Yvonne, you've got Piers, all these people we've never seen before. They're like popping up onto the deck and the tender is dead. The battery is dead because Ian was in it last night and forgot to turn it off. So Ian, who has been asleep through all this and has caused one of the major problems. So now the boat is not the boat is can't move. The tender can't move, and they're what Sandy's woken up Ian. She's mad at Ian. Everything's going to shit. And they're they one thing that they're going to do is they're going to tie a line from one windlass to another windlass, and they're going to use that one to do that something with that one. But then the line snaps, and the thing falls, and it's looking like they're going to be leaving an anchor at the bottom of the sea. Dun dun dun. Um, and then we just hear, "Ow! Oh my God, Gil." <laughs> How did that hit you? I just needed to feel comfortable so I was in the water when you let go of the anchor. Gail. <laughs> Terrible timing, Gail. <laughs> Get up here, Gail. <laughs> Crazy little nugget. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, that was some below deck. Thanks for being with us on Crap and On Demand and watching this, some of you. And we will talk to you next time, okay? Love you guys. Bye. Bye.
Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We wanna hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish, it's Jen Plish. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender, the incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Ring that bell for Rachel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys.